Walaikum salam. Can you talk about the reality of Yom al Qiyamah? <laughs> Those are like entire subjects. You have to you have to you have to collect these as like entire subjects for night talks. This night talk about this, this night talk about that. <laughs> They're not a small subject. Uh, most important of Yawm al Qiyamah is that how are you going to prepare for it? <clears throat> the reality that you can't prepare for it, you can't get boots because it's going to be hot and Allah is going to be burning you. So. The Armageddon is what Prophet had given to us as our preparation. So between now and the end is impossible to predict and to plan for. Other than what we described, you live your life for the last chapter, how am I going to end this life and I'm going to work towards that ending. But Armageddon and why Naqshbandiya is called the tariqah for Sayyidina Mahdi is because the richness of its if its teachings that this way is based on the preparation for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi That you live your life for that preparation, your home to be stocked for that reality. You have to have food in your home, you have to have the provision set aside, you have to have all of these understandings and teachings and your meditation, your connection, all of that and to continuously look for the signs. That's why the shaykhs are always teaching the signs, they're teaching what people are not understanding that the dajjal is a jinn and if they think he's a human he's going to be walking around with those types of powers. No, it's not true, he's a jinn so that people should appropriately prepare themselves. And the jinn nations are entering onto the earth and they have what they are planning on doing. As a result of believing in the Armageddon, you can prepare for that. And if you prepare for that, you reach a state of faith. If you live your life believing that, oh the shaykh is saying, these signs are real, these signs are actually here, these events are about to happen. And that's what is called the yaqeen of faith, the certainty of faith. As a result, Allah grants you the re reward. The shaykhs merely put the ishara, the teachings that, here you go, it's for the student to have faith. So they have to take it and believe in it and then the signs of their belief is their action because belief is not something you just keep hidden. Belief is when Allah looks at your home and sees that you have no provision, then you caught with your pants down. When Allah looks at you and says that you're not planning for Qiyamah, you look like you're planning for something else. So means that and that's the individual faith of that servant that nothing to do with the shaykh. The shaykh lives a life differently, he's prepared and this is what he's reached. But the students have to take the teachings and as much as they apply them, Allah grants them faith. And that's why between your left and your right your faith is all different. Someone may be sitting next to you, you don't think of them as anything but they may have a perfection of faith that they believe as a result of their believing, their, their moving and acting upon that belief, Allah open for them to see through their heart. And as a result their belief and their yaqeen became more perfected. But if you just occasionally come, occasionally support, occasionally listen, that's something different, you're going to be caught by surprise once these difficulties happen in the intensity they happen and two, you don't ever reach the perfection of faith. So this is a whole science, it's, it's not guesswork, it's very meticulously being taught just like at school. So when they teach about these signs, the student's responsibility for alamat is they believe. They believe it, they look, they say, yeah it's right here. When people were teaching about Dajjal is going to enter everywhere except Mecca, Medina. Did anybody see that he already did that now? 
or they're, they're hoping that he's coming with an army of, of horns. His army are clowns and they already entered and they had a concert called the Concert of the Beast. And they already entered with other concerts, they shut their, their rooms for four nights. So he, he doesn't have army of horns, he has armies of clowns. And those clowns have already entered into all those regions. They're going to try to have a concert in Mecca and Medina and Allah was, Allah will forbid them. But they'll go to that palace and have their concert. So he's already entered, he's there, his influencers are doing their dawah. And that's why he pays them hundreds of millions of dollars to corrupt the souls and minds and hearts of mankind. So it's already here, I don't know what people are, are waiting for. As a result they have to believe, with their belief is what? That they support, all their life is about service. Are they going to serve with their time? Are they going to serve with their wealth? Are they going to serve with their ability? Are they going to serve themselves to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad When we say, Fadat Bisham that, may I be sacrificed for you? You're reading it but very few people believing it. That every night they ask Prophet that, let me to be sacrificed for you, grant me a way and to reach. Grant me a noble passing in this world, means all these things that are happening these are all signs of something opening. And that, that loyalty, that love and that respect that their whole life at the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad And they pray for his nazar and his support, his rida and satisfaction. And as a result that dress them and bless them. So everything's already here, it's just eyes for people to see it and ears for them to hear it from the shaykhs. If the shaykhs are teaching and they're not really hearing but they look and say, no this thing is far off, no, what do you and they're doing their concerts in these cities, it's already here. <clears throat> Walaykum as uh, Can you please explain the reality of time dilation during holy Isra wal Miraj? Time dilation during, during the Isra wal Miraj? Did you get the timeless reality? <laughs> you have to buy two copies because that question means you didn't read the book. If you're in Pakistan it's too expensive, don't worry. <laughs> but if you're in the West two copies, one for you and one for someone you love, inshaAllah. <laughs> this whole teaching is about timeless reality. So that, that, that is in every talk that we're giving. So when you sit and you do your muraqaba, what's the hadith that Prophet <laughs> described that their are servants that they do one hour of muraqaba is like 70 years of worship. So means that's the time travel and that's the folding of time. That when they train, they train, they train, once they make the connection they park their physical body and as a result of their training their soul comes out. As soon as their soul connects with the shaykh or with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad entered into this realm of light, that realm of light has no time. So if they're sitting, how long have they been sitting in that presence? What transpires to you maybe after 20 minutes you come out you say, oh, oh I feel like I was unconscious, that's your time. 20 minutes on this earth. But what took place in that realm of light? Who they trained, they understand how to connect. As soon as they connect, their soul is connecting, 
and they're moving into that reality. A reality which has no time, if they spend that presence in the presence of holy souls, what type of dress is being dressed upon them, what type of realities are being dressed upon them and how long are they staying in that reality and what part of them comes back. You think all of them comes back or portions of them come back but the greater part of the reality stayed within that light to be dressed by that light. That means it's not something that we can understand but its scope is immense, immense of what is happening in the world of light and the wave reality. But humans are picking the worst and just want to remain a particle. A particle feels nothing, senses nothing, feared of everything. But a wave reality is moving in dimensions, in time in, and there is no time, in universes, in, in beyond universes into the world of the heavens and into the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad With what lights, with what blessings, with what dressings are being dressed upon their souls. And that's why Prophet described that one hour of tafakkur for them is like 70 years of your worship. Why? Because in 70 years you can't attain what they got in one hour of their connection to the presence of Prophet or presence of awliyaullah, doesn't have to be that high. In the presence even awliyaullah are immensely high. In the presence of awliyaullah, in the presence of holy companions, in the, in the presence of Ahlul Bayt, one hour in that light Prophet was giving an inspiration, it's like somebody sitting for 70 years and praying. So then you may sit in a mosque think, I prayed 70 years but there may be a young person who does tafakkur and in his one hour he's accomplished more than you did in your 70 years of your worshipness. That's the immensity of, of the practice and that's why shaitan blocks it and knocks it and begins to try to take it off. And those whom should be meditating from Ummat Muhammad the most powerful nation that Allah has created, they don't. And all the other people, they do. They Everybody on earth is, oh I meditate, I do like this, I do like that. But the nation that should be doing it with the, with the love and the connection to Sayyidina Muhammad shaitan fools them not to make tafakkur, not to make their connection and that becomes a shame for the difficulties of the last days. What's going to come to you of download and information and power and qudra when Allah describes in the Qur'an, it was not your hand that threw but it was ours. What does that mean? That they were doing things with their hand and Allah is clarifying for them, it wasn't your hand, it was our hands. Means that when that energy overtakes that insan then that world of light is supporting them which can't be understood by the physical world and physical people. So this is what the people are in need of to connect to that reality inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah <coughs> Sayyidi, what is the importance of putting onions in the home? Onions in the home? <laughs> yeah, onion in the home is, is Grand Shaykh Dagestani described that in the event of a nuclear attack that somebody has to take an onion, they cut it in half and breathe over the onion to be protected from the nuclear cloud that will be coming. So that's one understanding and some other shaykhs have given other examples of onions and, and to do these types of things. InshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Is there any reality in drinking Colloidal silver as a protection against shayateens? Drinking what? Colloidal silver. Colloidal silver, what's that? 
no idea, Jake. I don't know if somebody going to drink poison and, and to do something <laughs> or thing. I, I don't know. We have to find it through hadith only and, and the teaching of awliyaullah. But if it mixing from Hindus and, and other things, no, we don't understand any of those things. Nor drinking cow and, and uh, other things that they do. So these things follow the prophetic medicine and what Prophet brought for us. That to drink from silver itself, it, it has a shifa. So they have cups that are from silver with Qur'anic writing and they put water in those cups and they drink from that. And silver has a, a cleansing. So upon the body it, it cleanses from sicknesses and from difficulties. But to drink a particular thing I'm not familiar with and I wouldn't advise in case it was poisonous and people got hurt or, or people pick up things from New Age teachings I'm not familiar with. Allah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How could one undo the deep rooted programming of Wahhabi Islamic teachings? You have to beat yourself. <laughs> you take a thing and say, oh, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> just do your muraqaba, make thoughts, make your connection, make tawbah to Allah and istighfar that, Ya Rabbi clean my heart, please clean my heart from this nifaq and from this hidden shirk, this sort of de deceptive madhab and teachings that came from uh, shayateen to come against the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If by now you should understand the whole of this teaching, the whole of our protection, the whole of every power is a key called Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah is a lock and Sayyidina Muhammad is a key, mifta rahmah. If you put that key and unlock, you unlock Allah's izzah and might. Allah's immense power and might dresses the servant whom takes the key of Muhammadun Rasulullah as their madad and support. As a result of that is a protection against every deviant sect and teaching. And that's the only sect that describes exactly like the hadith that they're going to present to you the dajjal, he's going to come. The dajjal has an office in every religion. So he has his agents within Islam, Christianity, Judaism, look that's not Jesus' teaching. This is not the Sayyidina Musa's teaching and this is definitely not the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad in those areas that they, they occupy. And he's going to take away that key and he's going to present what we described a few nights or a month ago. He's going to describe paradise and know that it's hell and then he's going to describe hell and you should know that it's paradise. And I think we described also he's going to have a, a fire and know that that's the, the goodness and then he's going to offer you a stream of water and know that's the fire, means they're the opposites. And that's exactly what Dajjal is doing now on earth, he's making everybody to be scared, come to his remedy. His water is fire and his fire is water. Means when he presents to you something to fear, Allah's teaching for us it's water, cool and peaceful for you. Don't worry about his fires. What he's claiming, what shaitans are claiming is fire. No, it's not fire, it's water, cool and peaceful. But if you should believe it's a fire, what's going to happen is you're going to drink from his other hand. And that hand is going to appear to be like a water and remedy for you. And it's not, that is an immense fire in that difficulty. So alhamdulillah all of these are now happening upon this earth. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam 
to improve meditation connection, should, mm. we, should we increase the frequency of times we practice in a day or the duration of one time in a day? No, you can do a few times in a day, short time, five, six, seven minutes right after your salah, you put some salawats in the area that you're praying. You made your salah and asking to be at Rudha Sharif that you're praying in Medina in the presence of Prophet You prayed your zohr at the Rosa Sharif and then at the end you're asking, say, Ya Rasul Kareem let me just to connect and to feel the energy of that presence. Asking for the madad of the shaykh and then you begin to do the practice and feel the energy. Just breathe for a few minutes in that energy and begin to talk to Prophet talk to the shaykh and feel the energy and make the connection inshaAllah. But not sitting for half an hour tormenting yourself with no connection. As salaamu alaykum uh, Shaykh. Wa alaykum as salaam. Uh, if one is to sacrifice dunya, how can one be ambitious in their life for success, wealth without being classified with those who don't receive their treasures being dunya oriented? Hmm. You can be successful in dunya and that's the key is that if you if you took the, the teachings to heart and say, Ya Rabbi that I uh, want to make my connection, I want to keep this love that whatever you grant of me I'm going to give in the way of Prophet I feed my family, take care of everybody but I'm going to be a big supporter in this Muhammadan love. So Allah give you more, what's the problem with that? If you say, no I'm only going to go and work all day long and then I'm going to miss all my prayers, it means you're not a balanced person. So this, this tariqah teaches people to be balanced. If you're going to play a lot in dunya then you're going to pray a lot when you get home. And if you're going to make a lot in dunya you're going to give a lot for akhirah. And what you don't have you don't give, that's not a problem. If you don't have your faqir but you're smart you give your time. But anyone who wants to make dunya at the expense of losing their akhirah that's a losing bet. You're talking about infinity which has no beginning and no, no end and saying, I'm only going to bet my whole life on this little dot that nobody can see. Your 70, 80 years of life is nothing compared to infinity. So everyone who you know sharpen their thinking, Ya Rabbi grant for me inshaAllah I be, become successful so that I can give big for tariqah, I can support tariqah, I can do all these things. And if it not and I work hard I'll give from what I've been granted and if I have a skill of a lawyer, a doctor, a, a engineer, IT guys, NFT guys, Bitcoin guys, anybody say, I want to give of service and I want to be of service. So, so many ways to, to accomplish and tariqahs are, are traditionally very strong. They're not filled with a bunch of poor people sitting on a carpet doing nothing. They're, they're made up of people whom are struggling, working, achieving and as a result they're very generous and very giving. The tariqah giving system is nothing like the masjid. So anyone coming from a masjid is very surprised, you know masjid is basically, hey you and me I don't really know, anybody want to help it's good for you let's do it. And they don't know who came, who went and who gave, who didn't give. Tariqah is not like that at all, khud amwalihum, we have the ayat of kareem on the center wall from Surah Tawbah, khud amwalihum, take from their money, take from them. Allah knows they're like the teeth, they're going to put their money in their mouth like teeth, they're not going to give it easily. So Allah just say, you're a dentist, pull it, right? Khut amwalihum, Allah just say, your shaykh is like a dentist, take the teeth out, he's not going to give it. And then what Allah says, that pray for them, your prayer is a relief and an opening for them. So means this system that Allah gave that was the system of Islam that Prophet was not asking people, uh, did you want to help? We have a, this difficulty we have to face. He was telling them that this is what we have to do, this is what you got to do, this is what you got to give and it has to be done. 
That system didn't end, it's just held and safeguarded by tariqahs. Tariqahs operate on that way. They tell the people, we have to build this, we have to do that and it has to be done. And everybody give from what they can and once they did that give even more so that they reach a state of as an ihsan of perfection, not holding tight to dunya and being fearful. For anyone who believes whatever they give to Allah is never wasted, not will their wealth be diminished a penny that Allah will give back in ways that they could never have understood or imagined, whether through good health through the health of their children, through lights and blessings within their heart and soul. That we don't know what things Allah's put upon our soul and openings and it's definitely Allah didn't open because of our cleverness. But it's because of the state of generosity and good character, Allah opened entire dunya and all samawati wal ard for servants because of that goodness inshaAllah. Mm. Uh. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh. Uh, Adam has a question? <laughs> you know I see on this camera right? Just just tell it then you can see me, I can see you. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <laughs> Wa Alaikum As Salaam Adam <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about modern Muslim countries? That was on your mind? <laughs> By Jafar Sadiq. Modern Muslim countries. I don't know, I don't know. We're not political people, Shaykh, so we don't want to, to make political friends anywhere. By Jafar Sadiq. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I, I usually speak abuses to each other. What should I do there? Uh, Go, go and uh, sit somewhere else. You don't have to uh, sit and abuse with other people and backbite with other people. I think when people work they feel that there's a culture in which they have to participate. They have to sit in the lunch room, they have to go to all the happy birthday ceremonies, they have to exchange uh, gossip back and forth and that's not true that you can establish your character of who you are by posting pictures of your, your, your family shaykh and put it on your desk and you don't go to the kitchen, you don't go to those areas and don't participate in these things. Just say, I'm here to work, get my check, be polite to people and leave. As soon as the drama of dunya because there's dunya in everything, dunya is, is, a, is sort of a caption all for everything related to this earth. So the dunya in a, in a work environment is the kitchen. Don't go there to gossip and talk with everyone. Stick with the work that you have and get out and go home. Dunya can be answering back and, and defending your nafs, that's very dunya oriented. Why are you defending your nafs? So it means all of these things in life is a chance for us to struggle against bad character, do your work, try to not talk too much at work by gossiping and, and, and hanging around and inappropriate communications between people. And as a result you, you become less attached to the dunya which would be work for example. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, if my patience is sending a message of weakness to the oppressor and his oppression is causing fitna for everyone, <laughs> what should I do? <clears throat> your patience? You lost me. If my patience is sending a message of weakness to the oppressor and his oppression is causing fitna for everyone. Your patience? <clears throat> you mean your soul? The, the soul is, is held ransom by the oppression of the ego. And the oppression of the ego and the ego is what's torturing everyone, yells and screams and fights and, and keeps uh, anger and, and anyone who enters into a state of anger and remains angry he's now possessed. 
or she is possessed. Justified anger, it comes and it goes. And justified anger by Allah is something completely different. That's against the nation and against the anything that partook against an Islamic right. But an anger that comes and goes, it didn't possess the person. Anyone who stays and remains within a state of, of qadab and qadab and anger, Prophet described as kufr. So when somebody becomes angry and as a result, that's it, I'm angry and then they stay in that anger, they're entered now into disbelief. So you get angry, that's human nature. You go wash, you go pray, ask Allah for forgiveness, that devil has washed away. When the person is not able to accomplish that and they remain within a state of anger, means the devil is locked inside of them, that one that caused that whole event to happen. And as a result you're not washing them out, you're not praying for them to leave. And if you remain in a state of anger then you're remaining within a state of kuf and disbelief and that's an that's immense danger and that's an immense sign that that should not be happening. You have to be able to leave it, leave it, it's not really important. Most can go and meditate and understand, oh okay this happened, that's what happened, whatever, I don't care. You don't like a particular person, no problem but there shouldn't be anger and rancor within the heart. Because now the heart was locked by the devil, once the heart has anger in it for anyone, for any reason, what happens? It's devoid of light. And that's why Prophet was is teaching that, you know, faith is love. And how can love enter a heart and have anger in it too? The two don't exist like, you know, ice, ice and fire, they don't sit in the same room. So, you can be temporarily angry, go wash, pray, meditate on it, say, ah this person I don't like, this person no problem. But to remain in a state of anger then the, the heart is being destroyed and most likely the shaitan is locked within that person keeping them to be angry and then thinking and then waswasing and, and the, those are, are dangerous states. And that's why we describe the, the, the reality of ulul am, the people who are training to take the command. If the shaykh tells you, you know every day you're eating chocolate and the shaykh comes and say, why well, you eat the chocolate like this, take one bite here, one bite there, two pieces here. Most people and that's why they never give an order to people, they come back and at night they'll be all night long with waswas. Why did he say that? Why did he tell me to take the chocolate like that? I'm not going to eat chocolate anymore at all. And then the nafs begins to fight with the person and they enter now into a big battle with their own waswas and that's the danger. And that also shows how difficult the ulul am, how much they had to suffer to overcome those things. So that they overcome, overcome, overcome until when the command comes to them, they act upon it, they don't let waswas to interfere with it. And they don't, they don't care about what anyone thinks, they have to accomplish what, whatever has come to them to accomplish. These are all the realities of the self that people are trying to combat. Allah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.